Welcome to Cosmic Brilliance, folks, where we once again have one of our dear favorites, Dragon Fae Super Soldier of Ptolemy Mendelian, who is here to offer perspectives on some of the toughest lessons she has learned while being on our experimental Earth. Lessons like a deeper understanding of neutrality, which I have learned from her and a few others is an absolute necessity for ascension and soul evolution. And also another topic is what she calls the toxic side of false love and light and the toxic side of self-serving ego. And then we'll end with a little bit lighter topic, like a few fun stories. So for new subscribers, I wanted to welcome you. And I tend to not remind everybody of this. So please make sure and listen to Cosmic Brilliant shows with Apollomy especially, starting with episode 18. So you are not lost and you do not send me questions that have already been answered. Okay, I'd really appreciate that. My shows are generally a progressive educational series and you will be served best by listening to them in order because it will expand your consciousness in order and you'll have the details you need to build on. So after that school marm warning, I welcome you back upon me, who I know, especially this morning, is rising out of the ashes like a phoenix to do this show for us. Because as usual, you're under the weather and have not had hardly any sleep and had a very dramatic mission so that you have almost every night. So we really, really appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me again. I, I really enjoy being on the show and very excited for today's episode. <laughs> okay. I know you want to get these points across to humanity, so... All right, so you've discussed in previous shows that the goal of this earth game in this is ascension consciousness. But like I, like I said, and like you've been teaching is all about the daily practice of being neutral or neutrality. So today we're doing, gonna do a deep dive upon me because I feel this is one of the most important points that needs to be more deeply understood in order for us to be motivated to commit to a daily practice of that. So to, as you know, to understand something fully, you need to have it broken down. So that's what I'm gonna be asking of you today. Now, folks, I wanted to share with you an aspect of my soul language and part of what will be expressed today is through the use of metaphors such as like the famous hermetic one that is as above, so below. I like to add also, which is pertinent to the show and what we'll be discussing as inside, so outside. And an example of that is it's a possibility that you are God to yourselves and you contain literally within you a universe. Now, I heard recently, which was a little bit shocking, uh, but got me even more motivated, and I heard from a very high being I trust dearly, that to ascend to the higher levels, according to the rules of ascension law, require us to purify our souls, as well as purification of the body. Now, here's the trick. He said that to ascend off this planet on your first try without having to reincarnate over and over again, forgetting who you are, requires 95% purification, which was very sobering when I heard that. I think that's a lot to ask of humanity. Now, I have already done at least five shows addressing levels of consciousness for ascension. And it is one of the many reasons that you may not know that highly spiritual beings like Yeshua, known as Jesus, Agnaughton, and others came to this world to teach and aid in ascending as many people as possible who had forgotten by so many reincarnations who they are, were, and why they came. So no matter what we thought previously, ascension, and what I thought previously, I should speak for myself, ascension is not a woo-woo thing. 
and is essential for the advancement of our souls. So let's contemplate first before I have Apollony begin the teaching to clarify the words of what purity and purification mean in the context of our body and soul. Now, for me, I imagine purity is about offloading karmic weight. So we literally are lighter and can be filled with more light as well as eating high light filled force, fresh foods to help purify our body, et cetera. I looked up the definition for us all and the definition of purity is the condition or quality of being pure, freedom from anything that debases, contaminates or pollutes. The definition of purification is the removal of contaminants, the process of making something spiritually or ceremonially clean. So Apollomy, with those definitions in mind, would you agree with those definitions? And can you, can you like talk to us more about conscious ascension? Um, yeah, the, the definitions are, well, there's quite a few in there for different things. You've got your, your mind purification, your body purification, and then of course, like the spiritual or soul purification. And they all have to take different steps on how to purify. So, you know, physical purification of the body, because it's more physical for everybody. It requires good food. If you're eating food that has poisons in it, have like toxins that will hurt your body, it's contaminating your body. And so your body is going to have a hard time existing. It's going to be on survival mode all the time. And when you're on survival mode all the time, trying to heal yourself of the toxins from around you that you're ingesting or environmental, you don't have time for evolution. The only you only really have time is to be like, oh, what's wrong with me? What's going on? I need to spend all of my energy healing myself instead of evolving. And then, of course, you have your, your mind purification, you know, purification of your mind. How are you interacting with the world? How are you perceiving the world? What are your thoughts and emotions that you have of yourself? You know, and then how is that reflecting on other people in your environment? A purified mind is going to be more stable. It's going to be able, again, to not be in survival mode all the time. You don't have to necessarily worry about where your next meal is coming from. You know, what you what you feel that everyone else is feeling or thinking about you. And that seems to happen a lot in this time frame. Everyone's worried about what everyone else thinks about them, but it's becoming toxic. It's all the way on the other side of the spectrum. You know, everyone feels terrible about, not everyone, I apologize. A lot of people feel terrible about their own self-reflection. And so they seek really, really strongly attention from others. So they feel validated. That's very toxic. You need to be happy with who you are and what you are in a healthy, purified manner versus, you know, the, I need all this attention, all any way that I can get it so I can feel dominant, so I can feel, you know, it feeds the ego. And we'll be talking about that later. There is a form of healthy ego, and then there's way on the other side of the spectrum. <laughs> so... You know, purified thoughts, a purified mindset is going to be, I have a plan. I know who I am. I know what I am. I know where I stand morally, mentally, emotionally, and all of those factors are so important. So when you have that purified mind, you are able to get out of that survival mode and get into the, you're essence your consciousness of your physical body is spreading out more it's not just closed in to yourself it's now spreading out you're able to see others and sense others you're able to sense your environment and consciously it links you better so that the universe can provide for you instead of you just feeling like you're on your own constantly very interesting thank you 
Thank you. Yeah. Those are all great reminders and great for clarity. Now, I know when we were having our long pre-talk preparing for this show, um, we were talking about conscious ascension is the capacity to actually evolve to a more neutral state of being, non-polarized, think Swiss, Switzerland during wartime, supposedly, right? So <clears throat> you shared with me a surprise that will be controversial for a lot of people. And that is when you reach the highest form of ascension, it's not about love and light. So talk about that and give us some examples. Most people think love and light as pure purification of enlightenment. Going through a lot of the communities and everything, they are, they, some of them are neutral the way that they're supposed to be when it's pure love and light. You know, love and light is, love is understanding. Love is compassion towards everything. Love is also understanding that things need to be that the way that they are and light itself is to is sharing everything sharing your your emotions sharing your thoughts it is what connects us consciously through light language and every single thing that has consciousness shares this it is literally the language of the multiverse whether you have a verbal talk or not it is literally the base form of of telepathy this is how animals interact with each other. This is how they can share information from two different species without ever body language or sharing anything. So, but it has become toxic to some points in certain communities because, you know, and, and, and it's like, I'll give an example. Someone who has drama comes to these people and they start questioning the beliefs of a person who is in love and light. And all they say is, you know, oh, you don't understand, you know, I hope you find love and light. They're very passive aggressive versus just being actual true neutral. Most people who are in in the the toxic love and light will be like, oh, you know, you're in the wrong. This is how it should be. I feel like you know, the the trauma that you're experiencing doesn't need to be there and you're sharing it with others and you're just spreading toxicity. A true neutral person will listen to what that person has to say. And a true neutral person who is of the love and light will literally be like, I feel your your sadness. I understand my compassion to you that I'm sorry you had to go through this, but without trauma, you cannot evolve. Every Everything becomes stagnant. You cannot evolve. I'm sorry you're going through this. Here is the resources that, you know, can be provided to you through my knowledge. Take them as you will, but you don't judge that person. You don't judge them of, oh, well, this person might be in the wrong or this person did a bad thing. You know, it, they are completely 100% true neutral. That is, that is a great. Now let's even pick a tougher example that triggers all of us. And that's when we see a child being hurt, stabbed, whatever. Okay, talk about that. In order to understand what true neutral is, when you go through certain forms of evolution, conscious evolution, the more higher you get, the more neutral you become. Because when you are true neutral, you have a balance of emotion and logic. Now, a lot of people on this planet are on the way side of emotion. They have some logic, but it is not to the point where the logic and the and the emotions are balanced out. And I did not really understand this a whole lot because I thought I was pretty balanced. But I didn't understand this until I was going to the ET councils, going to the meetings of the experiments on this planet, going to the higher council meetings of the multi or of the universal councils, 
and talking about problems from all over the, the universe. We're getting teams and people representing from many different quadrants and species, even the ones who are warring against each other are in the same the same council meeting. Absolutely. So you get to see every person's point of view and how they are and their conscious evolution mind frame. The higher ones are 100% pure neutral. And it can seem very cruel to people who are on the emotional side because they're like, well, why is this happening? Why are you allowing this to happen? This is totally morally unacceptable. And I was completely like that when I first started off too. I'm like, what you guys are doing down here is 100% unacceptable. You need to come down here and fix this. Until I got to the higher council meetings and I started to evolve myself, it made no sense to me. I was like emotionally, morally, soulfully like hindered and just upset that they were allowing this to happen. A lot of emotional people of species and stuff, they're very reactive. Not only do they get offended emotionally, but they get offended physically too. And it can cause a lot of physical actions to happen. I am not not guilty of that. <laughs> <laughs> But I also have to remain neutral as well because I am not allowed to let my personal feelings go above and beyond the neutrality that it takes to do my job. You know, so in in neutrality itself at a higher conscious level, you understand that bad things have to happen. And I'll give an example of this. When I lived in Hanova, which is Central Universe, the true laws of one apply there. No one is allowed to hurt you. No one is allowed to put you through trauma. The worst thing that's going to happen is you fall and you scrape your knee. Unless you sign physical contracts that say, I want to go into battle. I want to experience something that is traumatic. Nothing changes. It is like living in a sterile environment of emotion, okay, and physical interaction. It's like a very sheltered child. They don't know how to react to things until they experience them. You know, you can see it on TV all you want, but until you're in that that person's shoes or it's happening to you, it's not the same, you know? So when I went from being completely sheltered in Hanova to the battlefield in Hanova on the outskirts, because you're not allowed to fight in certain sectors, things changed because all of a sudden people were getting hurt. I was in a, in a life or death situation, which had never happened before. That is illegal unless you sign those contracts, which I did, you know, and the whole experience is completely different. Now, let's go back to why this is important, because every single person that ever exists in any timeline here has a consciousness. We are all tied to the universal consciousness that we reside in. Everything that belongs in Hanova is tied to the, the Hanovian consciousness. Everyone who exists here in this universe, our consciousness is shared and tied with the universal consciousness itself. Think of it as like its own being. And then we're just cells. Our consciousness is just cells or small neuron networking nodes that are connected to it. We have each individual our own experiences. But when our physical forms die that consciousness goes back to the prime consciousness. So our consciousness would go back to our this universal consciousness. All of those experiences, everything that we've ever experienced, everything we've ever worked through, our happiness, our joy, our sadness, goes back to that mainframe of consciousness. And that mainframe kind of like, dissects everything and it integrates everything into it so think about 
universal consciousness is an immune system, okay? If the universal consciousness is a body of its own and we're just tiny cells or networking, you know, um, we are experiencing our own existence, our own trauma, our own happiness, and it affects that entire mainframe system, that it affects the entire body. So if it was to stay in a sterile environment, if that body, that, that universal consciousness body was to stay in a sterile environment where it had no trauma, nothing bad ever happened to it, it would have no immune system to fight off and or have the knowledge to cope with certain things so say a child has gets stabbed has trauma you know ends up dying that trauma would go to that universal consciousness it would only experience that trauma now if that child had died that's what would happen it would just go back to it if the child survived and was able to go to therapy, work through everything, you know, been like, okay, this traumatic thing happened. And now I survived that. And now I'm getting help. I'm working through the emotions. I'm working through the physical trauma and healing from that. Now that universal consciousness has an antibody for knowing how to deal with trauma in that only specific way that that individual has found the the way to cope. Now, if 25,000 people ended up having the same trauma, getting stabbed and found different ways to cope, now that universal consciousness has several different ways to cope and it can evolve and learn to deal with that trauma. I hope that made sense. <laughs> oh, that was like the best. It is the best. And and folks, for those of you that uh, don't know the term of uh, what antibody is, <clears throat> um, from the micro viewpoint, an antibody is a protein whose job it is in your body. Here's a key. What you were talking about, Apalmi, is to remember or recognize something that is harmful, not good for you, i.e., discernment in relationships or anything else is a metaphor. So it recognizes that virus or bacteria, like she was saying, and it disables it, i.e. neutralizes it so that it doesn't multiply and take over your body. So that's the job of antibodies. We should call it pro-bodies, actually. I don't know what they call it, antibodies, because it's helping the bo our bodies out. So I love your metaphor that humans in a way and their commitment and ability to do their own homework and come up with new solutions and a map of how they did that gets fed back to all creation and source so that other people can use it. And it's how source grows, how creation grows and how we then also possibly can prevent more negative things from happening. Would you say that's fair? Right. Because when, say you already have been through a certain trauma, like a child getting stabbed. Okay. Um, hopefully no one ever goes through that. It is, it is very traumatic, but again, neutral neutrality. So that child getting stabbed works through that trauma overcomes that trauma comes to terms with that trauma and now they have the antibiotic for it so when it happens again it might be a different situation and they might have a little bit of relapse but now because they've already gone through that it might not be as hard for them to cope with it and heal themselves it might take a little bit of a different approach each time but they have a basis now instead of just having a blank slate of like, what do I do? And it's not even just for conscious evolution of this. It's for physical evolution. Everyone who has trauma, whether it be your dad, your parents, your your sis sisters, your siblings, your cousins, 
everyone's trying to share their own experiences on if you go to them for help or need to seek guidance. We, how many times has a person had like, oh, I'm having issues with my girlfriend or I'm having issues with my boyfriend. You go to 20 different people. They might all take different routes. But if you look at the very basics of everything, all the basics are still there. Communication, you know, putting everything on the table, put your feelings on the table, even if it hurts them or hurts you, you know, or makes the situation worse. And figuring out what you can cope with, what you can compromise, or you're just going to have to break up. Those are your three options, <laughs> you know, or be miserable and continue with it if you're a masochist. But, you know, so the same thing applies. Like, whatever you learn here, you can help the other beings here. But because DNA holds memory of everything that you experience, everything you've experienced, when you have a child, you're sending that DNA information to your child. So the consciousness is the same way. You're like sending all of that DNA conscious information to the main consciousness. And that consciousness is part of another consciousness. It's like this huge, like us down here, we're like the cells of a stomach. Okay. Our, our universe is, is the stomach. We are the cells of that stomach. That universe is part of a bigger universe or multiverse. And so it's just one organ in an entire body but it all receives the same DNA conscious information. So yes, it is a traumatic experience. Emotionally, it should never happen. You know, neutrality states that, yes, I, as a neutral being, yes, that should never happen. It should never get to that point. However, you know, it has happened. Therefore, the only thing you can do is be compassionate towards that person, let them talk, and then give the information to it. You know, am I going to stop someone if I see them trying to stab a child? Absolutely, because I have the ability to and I am there if it suits me. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> but if I don't have the ability to save what's going on, and to stop it, you know, even if the child survives, I have to understand that evil exists in this world, but we can control how much evil is really there. You know, again, stagnant is, is not ev evolving anything. Change has to happen. And change usually happens between breaking the, the, the extreme balances. You know, you can have evil in the world and be like, oh, well, that guy's just a jerk, you know, like, oh, he's just going around tipping around trash cans and breaking windows versus going around and shooting people. Okay, two different things of evil right there, you know, just like evil actions, just like good actions, you know, you can be a nice, compassionate person or you can be a paladin where it's like, oh, that person totally just spit their gum on the sidewalk. I'm going to go beat them with a mace because that's breaking the law, you know. That's over toxicity of things. It's unbalancing things. What needs to happen for evolution of this universe is the balance. The balance of good and evil. You know, try to make the laws of one as much as you can here, but it's not going to be able to be 100% because the, the rule breakers, they don't have to follow the laws of one that come from another universe. For the ones that are like super old, who get abducted all the time, who have family history of their families getting abducted, those are usually people who have stock in them, okay? Like uh, certain ET factions have put money into that family where they get to do certain things the laws of compliance do not work for them in their physical body per se now we all have the right to fight for our freedom from that but you have to know how to do it
And there are ET factions who are trying to get people to wake up, to help reach out, and to be able to free themselves. There are factions that exist like that. You said the law of compliance should apply here for uh, the soul, for sure, and in some of the case for the body. Is there any other rules uh, here that people should know about that is not really the same rules as Hanova? So <laughs> here's the here's the kicker. Okay. The rules of the universe of yeah. this universe have some of the laws of one, but because yeah. our bodies are on an experimental planet, the experimental planet rules are even worse <laughs> than <laughs> the laws of a free will universe because we are on a free will planet as well. And so they have even less standards for what happens to people down here. That's why we want everyone to evolve and ascend and get up in space because you'll have more rights. Yes. And remember when we talk about everyone, uh, people, this is really important to remember, not only are you infinite in the morals as a soul, but we're talking, there's, there's, there's one aspect down here for most people that keeps reincarnating, okay? You have other aspects that are free all over the place. So, so remember, you don't have to get so frightened when you hear this news that this is this aspect, exploring this, learning this, providing this. And as you said so beautifully in our pre-talk, Apollomy, I got chills. You said we are actually the cells of the multiverse and serve one another and source. Our job is to have neutralizing capacities and resiliency for whatever challenges come up. Woo! You nailed it. But that's part of the dysphoria as well. When it's it's like the cells of a body, okay? When certain cells start to evolve, it changes your environment. It influences the environment. It influences the cells next to it. Be like, hey, you know, I've got this new energy, this new way of doing things, you know, you don't have to push evolution on people. It will happen naturally. I have had many of my students and friends who were not consciously evolved, you know, just hanging around me. We don't push our, our viewpoints or anything on people where, where I'm from. And so they started to evolve naturally just being around us. I had one friend who literally showed up on my doorstep, had only a backpack with him. The F word came out of his mouth at least four times in one sentence. You know, every other word was was a swear. But we let him be himself. You know, he wasn't hurting anybody. He, he, he kind of had a bad attitude a little bit, you know, was kind of punkish, been like, I, don't, I do what I want. I don't care what other people think about me. You know, he had a lot of trauma. Within three months of just being around me and my family, you know, we let him be himself. He wasn't like throwing anything against the wall or anything. You know, we laid down rules, obviously, that are normal, but he stopped swearing so much. He started having table manners and we didn't do anything. We just let him be him, you know? It happens naturally. And then once he started because energy, frequencies are contagious. They are. <laughs> a good point of contagious frequencies you're having a great day everything's going good one of your friends comes along and they're just having a bad day you know and their attitude just sucks and it just brings the energy down you know it just sucks all the fun away and you're just like man like shouldn't answer that door <laughs> <laughs> you know and trauma energy or depression energy is denser than than happy energy and it's more condensed so therefore it's going to affect you faster than just being happy that's a really important point for ascension mm -hmm. right because it's heavier right is right it heavier and holds you down right the point so uh, go for, ahead. Ne for neutrality you know we when you go up the levels of ascension, it's not just going to be like, bam, I'm neutral. It's steps by step, just ever so. Been like, oh, well, that that really sucks. You know, like 
I, I'm sorry, you know, you're having a hard time. Let me be compassionate. But the logical side starts to come out too. You know, logically, most people are going to take their friend's side of whatever's going on. They're having relationship issues. Oh, their partner's a jerk. That's all emotional. All right. Logically would be like, I feel for you. I'm sorry you're having issues. You know, I want to help you. But you're kind of being dumb because the the evidence is straight up in your face. And you don't want to break up with this person because your heart's going to hurt and you're going to miss them. But you're dragging yourself through the mud versus there's a lot of people out there. And if you really apply yourself, you're going to get someone who's better, you know, that you're compatible with. Maybe do different tactics so that you're truthful. You're not catfishing anybody. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. if you want to yeah. have a partner that's that's loyal and, and, you know, not even just loyal, but like that you have a connection with. So, you know, there's, there's the logic versus the 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 emotion. Now, when you get into like the ET councils, I've talked to a lot of the councils that that are even control of the stuff down here. You know, and man, did I want to punch them in the face? <laughs> I can't guarantee <laughs> that I haven't hit one of them at least. But when I talk to them, I'm like, do you have any idea what ha what's happening down here? Oh yeah, you guys are doing great. I'm like, do you really have any idea of what's happening down here? How they feel? What's going on? They're like, oh, well, we have high hopes that they'll evolve. And I'm like, no, they need more help is what they need. Yeah. Because Things are crashing too fast, too hard, and there's not enough evidence. There is not enough. A lot of people are leaving their religions. A lot of people are starting to become atheists. They're losing, you know, everything. They're losing hope. Hope because they're not, they're not seeing, because of the immediate stuff that's still controlled, they're not seeing anything positive happening, even though there is a lot of positive things happening. Right, because it's so spread out. Mm -hmm. You know, again, energies affect a area. So if you have a lot of people who are on the same wavelength of ascension, been like, you know what? We're just going to create a community that is more of ascension. You know, here's the rule set. We're going to go in. We're going to make our own food. We're going to try and, you know, excommunicate the world around us a little bit. You know, and things start to become better. Like survival isn't really too much of an issue because everyone knows their part. Everyone takes their, their responsibility to yeah, their responsibilities of doing something and they can focus on a community versus just themselves. You know, nobody is perfect. Okay. I have met divine creators that aren't even perfect. Exactly. Everything is a learning process. That's no what they need us to learn from. <laughs> exactly. That's the whole point of this show in many ways. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like if if perfect is a point of view, but even the most like the Kuite, um, the uh Chuck Zuri, you know. A lot of these species, some of the, the dragon species who are in control of this universe for, for the prime creators of this universe, a lot of them are more neutral than anything. Some species have a little bit more emotion than other. Palladians. I've had to work Palladians. on that. They yeah, the, the, dra uh, the dragons, not draconians, not dracos, but dragons, actually like the Christic dragons and that sort of stuff. <laughs> they're a little bit more emotional than some species, <laughs> you know, but they're also very logical. <clears throat> when I was talking to some of these, I'm like, why aren't you guys helping? You know, emotionally and morally that this is wrong. Why aren't you doing your part more, you know, in the places that actually matter? And their answers literally were, and not, not just like, you know, some of the good ones, but they're like, if there was no trauma, things would not evolve. We're waiting for them to pick up their pieces, to get their acts together and show us that they can evolve and not just wait for the parents to come and save them. Very, very, very true. And that's the hard part of this because 
because most people are trained so much in polarizing. They think that being neutral, the first question they ask me is like, oh, does that mean you don't care or have compassion? <laughs> no, it doesn't mean that. One word I like to use is maybe this will be also helpful for people is neutrality is the capacity to observe before, <laughs> before you act. Talk about that. Right. Because logic gives you the observation skills, because if you're too emotional, you're just reacting. You're not observing or thinking at all. You're just reacting to whatever the first trigger is instead of stepping back, looking outside the box. There is always three points of view. The person that's afflicted, the person that's afflicting, afflicting, and the environment around it. So you have to take all those aspects into consideration before you can actually make a final judgment or a final, you know, observation of like, okay, well, wait a minute here. You know, I have all this evidence now that I've stopped and looked at everything. I've got their point of view. I've got the other person's point of view and the environment's point of view. Every single one of those points of view is going to have something that is correct about it. It's its own experience, okay? Everyone's going to have their own emotional, their own mental, and own moral aspects. Their but own doesn't truth. necessarily, huh? Their own truths. Their own truths. It doesn't mean that every single person in that situation is wrong, okay? Everyone is going to be right in some aspect. People perceive their reality differently than everyone else. You ever get into one of those fights yeah. that's like, I remember you doing this, but I didn't say that. <laughs> it's like playing telephone when you were a kid. Right. You say something, by the time it goes through the fourth person, it's like, I never said that. <laughs> so, but everyone's perceiving their own reality a certain way. Some people are more observant than others. And some people are so on their emotions that they're only perceiving reality the way that they want to perceive it versus what's actually happening. Does that make them wrong? It kind of does, but at the same point, that's how they perceive reality. So they're still in their own truth. So when you get into a conflict like that, you just have to learn to be neutral and been like, this is the way that you perceived things. And that is their, their now their life experience. This is the way I perceive things. And that's my life experience. And this is what actually happens because you get that third party point of view of, well, you both are kind of in the wrong, but you're truthful in your own experiences. So you have to come to a conclusion, you know, either come together and accept the fact that both of you had your own realities that's conflicting with each other. How are you going to solve that? What are you going to do? Great. Great point. And doesn't this also, because I, I, I keep wanting to give people more flavor. So neutrality, practicing observing first before reacting, right? And um, the other thing is the judgment thing, because one of my faults is judgment and impatience. And um, so an example I, I could give of, of what I could say neutrality versus judgment. Cause I, I think people, uh, examples are useful to people. Instead of looking at someone and listening to them and being disgusted and going, <laughs> I'm speaking for myself <laughs> and saying, and I, I, I'm like, what an, eh. <laughs> you know, uh, and I'm like, get out of here. Um, that would be of course, extreme judgment and a lack of neutrality versus like, I expect, re respect your viewpoint. I can see you're having fun with it. This is how you believe, whatever, but I'm not going to participate. So have a good day. Bye. That to me is a certain mastery of neutrality. You're not dumping. Right. Would you say that's true? Or Well, like I said, there's different forms of neutrality. What you were describing is a way to diffuse the situation. Exactly. That you're not feeding into, you're not feeding into the drama. You're not feeding into the energy of that person. Just been like, I respect your your opinion. I respect your the way you perceive things, but I don't want to interact with that. So good luck. You know, just like exactly. go about your way. I don't want to be a part of this. Also, I'm looking all the time at people's tendency to want to be victim even when they're not. Mm -hmm. Like in a relationship, like you were talking about earlier. And 
a hundred percent of the people I've asked say this. I go, you can't tell me because they're complaining about the relationship, right? And I go, you can't tell me that when you first met him, you didn't see the red flags or met her or the yellow flags, but you were so attached to having the dream, not the logic or right. facts that you chose to go ahead. So take responsibility for that rather than he's doing all this to me or she's doing all this to me. That's another example, right? Exactly. Absolutely. And for the, for the point of neutrality is literally like everyone has to be responsible for their own actions. You have the right to have your emotions. You have the right to, you know, have your morals and the way you feel. But when someone's talking to you and expressing their truth, their experiences, you don't be so judgmental on them because it's the way they're perceiving reality. Is it true? Well, yeah, to a point, you know, or it's the full truth. But is it the outside truth of what their actions and emotions are perceiving to the environment and everyone else? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. But you don't judge based on that. You you hold back yourself. You listen to them, even if they're wrong, okay? Like, even if they're wrong, you don't interrupt them. You're just like, I'm listening so I can understand their viewpoint. I can understand truly what they are. I'm leaving my ego aside to understand their existence. And then I can put my ego back in and then be like, this is what you're conveying to me. Is this true? Is this how I am perceiving how you're trying to tell me your reality? And if it's yes, then you can put in your input. You know, that's the basic forms of neutrality, you know, and it's, then you can, I mean, like relating re neutrality is, and I get this all the time from a lot of the ET council members on many different species and, and, and factors or factions, they will listen to me. And then they give me their advice. Of course, it's usually vague because a lot more logical beings don't have the emotional synonyms and metaphors. You know, they're just like, they're very blunt and straight to the point. You know, you need to do this or you need to do this. There's not a lot of detail, <laughs> you know, because again, everyone does neutrality different. And that took me the longest time to understand because but you're I'm also like, in, a, in a military milieu too. Huh? You're also in a military environment where they give orders though too. <laughs> no, I'm talking about like the council member council members. We're talking about like the Octarian council members. But the when they say you need to do this, give us an example. So I was having issues with being owned by negative ET factions. I didn't even know who owned me at the time fully, had no idea. I needed help. So I went to the Andromeda Council and I was like, I know you guys have interest in me, which I didn't know that part of them owned me at the time either. And I was like, you need to do something about this. You guys know who I am. You, you know everything about me. I'm like, you guys are supposed to be the good guys. Why aren't you doing anything? Like, I am literally asking you guys for help. And he, they literally told me that even though they felt emotionally that things were wrong, there wasn't a lot they could do because they had to comply with the rules of this universe. So the experimental universe. The experimental <laughs> universe. And I was on an experimental planet. So their hands were tied because they are the law bringers. They follow the laws where the other factions are not following the laws. They're breaking the laws, but there's not a whole lot they can do per se, because those guys had stock in me too. So they had to remain neutral to a fact, a point because, you know, but did they the give you a helpful suggestion? When they said, this is what you need to do, what, what did they? So their neutrality answer was basically like, you need to know yourself in order to help yourself. Exactly. That is so not, bl that is blunt, but there's no context. 
I'm like, I already know what I am. I already know who I am. How is that supposed to help me? No, what he, what they actually meant was you need to know yourself. Who created you? What is all the species that own you for your DNA contracts? All this other stuff. How the heck was I supposed to get that from that contract? <laughs> exactly. Because you have to put through the effort. And this is one of the major reasons I was so delighted to meet you um, is that you are explaining the cause of confusion here, depression here, so much here, because people have heard in the new age community, they heard this is an experimental earth. Mm -hmm. They weren't given any definition because if they were anything close to me, I came in totally polarized one way and I thought everything was crazy. You know, like what? Okay. You don't say. <laughs> yeah, I know you know that. So, but people are going, the reason why they shut down, shut off, don't empower themselves is they just think they don't know the rules. So they also think this is the only them. So these are the two things people. So by understanding that maybe a lot of you have been on Hanover, you've probably been on other universes, you've been on other Earths, you have planets, you have different experience. This fractal of you is here on an experiment, not, not the like, woohoo, love one great thing. Experiments are experiments, are experiments. <laughs> so they're they're always designed to not always the wisest but designed to come up with new things let's see if this works 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 so if you can keep that in mind you realize how courageous you are how many challenges you're going through and to keep empowering yourself in what that you can do from a soul and that's what you're teaching <laughs> right that. and and going over the laws of this universe it is a free will universe, which means that the laws of one do not entirely exist. So people can, you have legally, right, legally, <laughs> right? Legally. Um, you have, you have the right to claim your soul, to tell your soul where it's going in your afterlife. Um, and nobody can stop you on that. If they do stop you, they are breaking the rules. Mm -hmm. All right. What I mean by is like, you have the right to choose what creator deity or um or none at all you know when your when your physical body dies you can go wherever you want you have the free right to go wherever you don't even have to reincarnate if you don't want to you could just float on whatever dimension you reside on all right mm -hmm. the other one is you, you have the right to evolve end of story no one is supposed to stop your evolution of consciousness you also have the right to ask for help. Nobody is going to take that away from you. If they do, they are they are stopping. Just be careful on who you're getting help from. Know your sources. And ask questions. Always ask questions. Because they don't, you don't get answers and they're not allowed to answer if you don't ask questions. Oh, they will try to be everything around the bush. They can lie to you everything until you ask certain direct questions. Mm -hmm. This goes for your, your people that you want your soul to go to, too. Who are you? Truly, what is your soul name? Who are you representing? If they don't say the, the gods of karma or the laws of karma, that's up to you. I wouldn't trust it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know. The other laws that are instilled on this planet is the laws of a free will universe. Um, they have the right to hurt you. The The laws of one for no one is allowed to hurt you does not apply here. You know, that's for higher uh, evolved universes. The reason why this universe has been created to have trauma, again, is to combat the stagnancy the multiverse and and the the this is really important really important point that you're making here the multiverse needs those antibodies so that it can protect itself from trauma in order to cope with it because if it doesn't know how to deal with it again 
most of the multiverse in the higher dimensions, they do not have a lot of trauma. They don't experience things the same way. And those rules are illegal. The experimental universes like this are very important. They suck, <laughs> but they are also very important. So having that free will universe where people can get hurt, uh, laws can get broken, you know, it's it's like that, I hate to say this, it's kind of like that shining light in the darkness of no hope and despair, you know, trauma going through, sucks. Going but through the doesn't, dark night of the soul. Yeah. Right? But you don't, you're not alone. A millions and trillions of species everywhere is going through the same thing you are at least one point or another. Not exactly the same way to cope with things because everyone experiences existence differently. But That's so important, so important. But it is also important so that things can evolve. We can make a better multiverse. We can make a better universe. We still have the capability of having dyspora, dysphoria and literally changing this entire universe to a better universe. It doesn't always have to be this terrible, guys. People, sorry, I don't mean to gender it, but it doesn't always have to be this way. We can control it. We can control certain factors of how much evil is actually in this world and in this universe. But people have to understand the power that they have as an identity of themselves so that we can start coming together and not only influencing, but recognizing that we need to work together. Yes. Beautifully said. If I wasn't going to continue the show, I'd end right there because that's like, woo! <laughs>